Hello everyone, welcome to this talk called uh, What's Fedora IoT? My name is Jose Noguera, I'm a software engineer in Red Hat and thank you very much for your time on this talk. So a little bit of context about who am I. Um, I'm Spanish, as you can tell from my accent. Uh, I've been working in, in Red Hat for almost three months now. Um, I've, be, I've lived in Spain, I've lived in Austria where I did my Erasmus. I lived in Dublin for, for a couple of years and now I'm living in London. I love traveling, um, that's something that I, I, I want to, uh, to be able to do again, uh, but I'm waiting, you know, for, for everything to be safer than it is now. Um, I consider myself a jack of all trades and a master of maybe one or two. I would, uh, you could say, a generalist, I like to know a little bit of everything and then specialize a little bit on some stuff. I'm a very, very curious person and I'm always learning and I'm an, the new maintainer of Greenboot, which is something a uh, support that we are going to talk about in this talk. So what are we going to talk about in this talk? It's, we are going to cover a little bit of context on what's IoT and what edge computing. We're going to talk, of course, uh, about for IoT. We're going to do a little uh, overview in the beginning. Then we are going to speak about libos 3 and RPM OS3, their features and peculiarities. Uh, we are going to speak about Greenboot as well, about Cesare, which is the provision platform. And finally, we're going to speak a little bit, just one minute, about Red 4 Edge. And yes, that's uh, not the Greenboot logo. We don't have any, <laughs> any logo yet. So if you are willing to, to contribute, please do, because uh, I think it could be pretty, pretty cool to have a, to have a logo. I, th I actually think it, I have a, look, a couple of mine, so we'll see, we'll see. But anyway, uh, any contributing will be very much appreciated. So, Internet of Things, what is it? Here you can find the Wikipedia definition, but um, in plain words, it's basically anything that it's not a computer and it's able to gather information and send information to a, to a remote location or a server, and it's connected to the Internet. That could be a very, a very, uh, a very mundane uh, definition. The definition that I could uh, say to my to my mother and to my grandma. Um, it could include uh, cars, fridges, air conditioners, speakers, uh, TVs, and basically anything called smart. You know, if it ha if it's a smart bulb, it's you can say that it's a part of this Internet of Things um, network. And regarding edge computing, Red Hat defines it as um, the computing that takes place at or near the physical location of the either the user or the source of the data. Uh, the most clear example for me is an autonomous vehicle. It wouldn't make sense that the sensors in the vehicle send the data they are gathering to a remote server in order to decide whether the object in front of them is a stop sign or not. It just would take too much time and could lead to catastrophic consequences like the car crashing or the car running over a pedestrian. What makes sense is that this decision of whether this object is a stop sign or not is done in the computer inside the car, closest to the source of data. And this is edge computing. And in case you don't get it, the picture is Dave Howell Evans a EU2 guitarist and best known as the Edge. And yes, and you can see uh, he is computing. I know, presentations and puns are not really my thing. Now for a quick overview on Fedora IoT. Um, it's defined as a foundation for Internet of Things and device Edge ecosystems. Their main features are uh, containerized applications, security in mind, um, multiple architecture support, web-based provisioning, and this is Cicero, uh, the project that we are going to talk about later on, and reliable uh, operating system. And regarding this last matter is what we are going to dive in today in this talk. LibOS3, formerly known as OS3, and actually OS3 is still very, very present in the, in the LibOS3 documentation, but I guess that in the future the, the the name of Libo history will gain more weight on this. So what it is, this is a, <laughs> so spoiler alert, this is a rather intense slide. Let me sum this up for you. The key points here are that libos 3 is an upgrade system that perform at atomic upgrades of complete file system trees. What does this mean and how does this help us? Well, 
This helped us by giving us a chance of rolling back to previous state of the entire file system tree, making it possible to quickly revert errors in configurations, for example. And I really like the summary of Git for operating system binaries. Um, I think it's a very, very good definition as the deployments are defined by commit hashes. You can actually check out two, two branches or refs in the Fedora IoT jargon and perform commit actions. So if you're familiar with Git concepts, you'll be familiar with uh, libos3 concepts in no time. On top of the previous features, libos3 also brings in bootloader configuration management of slash etc as we'll see in the following slides and some other functions that make this library ideal for IoT devices. Libos3 can be used alone, but adding a package manager on top of it is a killer combination that will allow us create a hybrid tree package system as we will see in the next slide. And this killer combination in federal IoT is called RPM OS3. Um, it uses uh, libos3 for the image system and uh, it uses for packaging, it uses libdnf accepting uh, RPM of both client and server side. The feature, features described in this slide align and extend, as you can see, the features that libos3 offers. Um, it like uh, atomic upgrades, rolling back without affecting user data, package layering on client side, and easiness of making our own derivatives. So, moving on with what makes Fedora IoT's file system peculiar, we have, for example, a slash user, uh, which is read only. In each deployment, a slash user will point to slash os3 slash repo slab objects. We will talk about slash of history later, but for the moment, uh, let's just say that this path in particular is a repository for all slash users, user files and binary binaries. In order to save disk, if deployments share a file, they will both both have a hard link to the same file in this directory, but new or modified modified files will be hard linked to each corresponding deployment. So well, if needed, there is a command that allows the user to make slash user writable. And this is rpm os3 admin unlock. This removes the read-only bind amount on slash user and replaces it with a writable overlay file system, but all changes in the overlay are lost on reboot. So it allows the user to test different configuration without compromising the system stability. However, in case this, uh, this change is an origin fix or we just want to make this change permanent, adding the suffix slash slash hotfix will create a new deployment and the current deployment will be cloned as a rollback tar target. And by the way, I know I talk a lot about deployments and let me just define this for you. These are the different atomic versions of our system tree. If we add a new layer to it, we are, for example, installing a new application, this is considered a new deployment. Moving on with what uh, makes uh, Fedora IoT's file system peculiar, we can see that a slash user is read-only. Um, in each deployment, it will point to slash OS3 slash repo slash objects that um, we will talk about this uh, slash OS3 later on, but for the moment, let's say that this path in particular is a repository for all slash user files and binaries. In order to save disks, if deployments share a file, they will both have a hard link to the file in this directory, as we can see in the image. It basically show us the uh, bin bash binary that um, in two different deployments, um, have the same inode number that the one that is in slash os3 slash repo slash objects. But for new or for modified files, um, these files will be hard linked in each different uncorresponding deployment. So we're going to have two versions of being bash that will have different inode and they will be both hosted in os3 repo objects and the different deployments will uh, just hard link to this uh, path. As well, if needed, uh, there is a command that, al that allows the user to make slash user uh, writable. And this command is 
RPM dash O street admin unlock. This removes the read-only bind mount on slash user and replace it with a writable overlay file system, but all changes in the overlay are lost in reboot. So if you want um, to test different configurations without compromising the system stability, this is just perfect for you. However, in case you need to make these changes permanent, you can add the suffix dash dash hotfix and this will create a new deployment based on the current um, uh, file tree and the current deployment will be cloned as a rollback target. And by the way, I know I'm talking a lot about deployments, so I'm going to stop here and define what a deployment is. And these are basically the different atomic versions of our system tree. We add a new layer to it via, for example, installing a new application. This is considered a new deployment. More stuff. Slash var directory is shared between deployments. You can edit a file in slash var in deployment one, go to deployment two, edit the same file, rollback, and the changes will persist. Slash etc, on the other hand, is unique for each deployment. For every new deployment, a new slash etc partition is created via a three-way diff between the previous default configuration, the active systems etc, and the new default configuration. As noted here in the slide, files will be copied, won't be hard linked as with a slash user. Contents will be the same, but they will have a different inode number. Now, we arrive to slash os3, which in fact is a symlink to slash sysroot slash os3, which were all the previous magic and differentiation between slash etc, slash var, and slash user happens, in a way. It contains several directories, but we'll focus today on the deploy one. Deploy contains another subdirectory, which in Fedora IoT will most likely have the same name, Fedora-IoT, but in roll 4 edge can vary, which is the system name. As said, in Fedora IoT, the name of the uh, system name is going to be Fedora-IoT, but in roll 4 edge this name can be specified by the user. Inside this deployment slash system name directory, we found two directories, var and again deploy. Var is where the shared var partition is mounted. Deploy is the set of files specific for that deploy in particular. Now, escaping from the file system features, we find Greenboot. Greenboot is a framework for systemd that allows administrators to define the desired and needed state for applications after booting. It performs a series of checks that basically are bash scripts included by the user. These checks can be required for things that are absolutely necessary for the system and wanted, for things that are interesting for our, for our system, but they are not essential. Let me show you an example. Require could be that the device has port 80 listening and Nginx up if, after every single update or boot, and wanted could be if the device is able to connect to a non-essential service after this boot. I hope that clarifies it a little bit. What happens if at, after an update all the required checks pass? Well, this boot will be marked as green and if defined, green boot will run another set of pass scripts. If the required test don't pass, green boot will mark the boot as red. Another optional set of pass scripts will be run, useful for instance to send logs or alerts to a different location, and green boot will reboot the system for a defined, a defined number of times. The default one is uh, three times. If after these times the boot is still marked as red, it will roll back to the previous deployment. Regarding what happened if the wanted checks failed, green boot will show on boot which scripts have failed so admins could check what's happening but the system won't be restarted or roll back. If you're wondering how to access your devices after you have burned the Fedora IoT image onto them, you can either customize the base image and add your credentials, be it user passwords or SSH keys, or you can use Cesare. Cesare is offered via provision.fedoraproject.org and is a platform for provisioning your IoT devices. 
you load your SSH public key or keys if you want and uh, when Fedora IoT first boots it will connect to Cesar and say hey I'm an unclaimed device connected from this IP then using your Fedora account and connected to the same IP as the device you can log into Cesar claim the device and this will shuttle the copy of your loaded SSH key onto the device after a short period of time normally 10, 20, 30 seconds, you'll be able to log in into your device using this SSH key. And now it's demo time. Let's pray to the demo codes to, <laughs> to ensure that everything goes fine. So first thing first, I'm gonna show you guys, um, sorry, Fox, sorry, uh, Cesar, the, this is the provision portal. Um, as you can see here, I have no unowned device from these devices, from this IP address. Um, so I'm gonna create a new virtual machine. I have already downloaded and extracted the um, Fedora IoT raw image. So I'm just going to use that one. Uh, no. Yes. Let's. Uh, yeah, I think this is fair. Um, Fedora. Let's save with Fedora. IoT demo. Let's finish and run it. So this is the first run. And as you can see it says browse to provision.fataraproject.org to configure the SSH key deployed. I'm going to do so fresh. And now here I can claim this one. Uh, well, we can see that the address ends in 8584. I claim it. Go to device management and submit. This is the one 8584. Submit provision request. And uh, here you we have three options: uh, Fedora installed, Fedora AOT stable, and Fedora rawhide. In this case, we are using Fedora installed because that's what the documentation says. And we're gonna schedule. And I'm gonna have to pause the video um, because it takes a little bit to to get the to get the the SSH key provision. Anyways, I'm gonna have this first. It's the IP of the virtual machine, and see you in a couple seconds. Okay, a few minutes has passed, and I'm gonna try to log into the to the virtual machine. Say so yes, I trust this. And as you can see, I just enter into the, the the new virtual machine. We've provisioned this device, this virtual machine, via Cesare. I want to show you folks as well uh, how Greenboot is working. So we are going to um, do first, and we're going to do first an installation of HTTPD. So I can show you how the atomic upgrades work. Um, let's go and install HTTPD. I'm gonna pause the video until it's installed. And it is now installed. Mm. I'm gonna reboot the system because it, uh, this is what's needed to in order to, to get into the new deployment. I want to make sure that we are able to see this. So I'm gonna move into this. And then now I'm gonna system setting, system control, reboot. And let's see what happens here. So as you can see now, there are two deployments. I hope you were able to see it. Um, and now in the new deployment, we have HTTPD. Status HTTPD.service. And we have now this installed. Now let's test, let's test how uh, Grimm works. And um, for that, what we are going to do is we're going to install Z Z S H and we are going to um, create a script in Greenbook Greenboot um, check directory and we're gonna create it in the required script. So this script needs to pass in order to for uh, Greenboot to mark this new deployment as uh, or this boot as uh, green. So what we're going to do is 
make sure that uh, SSH, SSH is uh, available and is present in the in the system. And uh, we're going to now reboot. And the next boot, we are going to see if this is uh, has passed. Okay, so that's rebooted, that's rebooting, and we have a new deployment with ZSH uh, installed. And it seems that everything went fine. As we can see here, yes, everything went fine perfectly, and everything is good. Now what we are going to do is uninstall ZSH and reboot it. And but we are not going to remove this uh, script. So in order for uh, what we, uh, remote is going to do is going to check if uh, ZSH is installed, and as it's not, it's going to, um, to reboot the system several times until it marks the this deployment as uh, taint and it's going to roll back to the previous deployment so we are going to reboot now and see how that works okay so now it's trying to 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 boot with a new deployment there are some failings here and it's going to try to boot again again it has encountered some fails one more time or fails and now it has selected the previous deployment the one that was marked as green and now we're gonna try to again and we can see here that this is a file book detected the default RPS uh, RPM OS3 deployment has been rolled back and as you can see, the script as the set as H has failed. So, and this is how Greenboot uh, works. Well, and that's the end of the demo. Going back to the presentation, um, just one quick note: there is a downstream supported version of Fedora IoT. It's called Roll for Edge and has some extra features, um, which are the image builder which is a very cool tool to create blueprints of the base images that you want to provision your IoT devices with. Um, it has a well as well support for Red, for Red Hat Insights and of course all the good stuff that comes with your Red subscription. If you folks have any questions, just find me. I'm Jay Nogara in IRC. Um, you can post any question as well in the IRC channel, uh, hashtag Fedora-IoT. And this is a list of the references that I used for creating them for creating this presentation. I hope you you folks enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your time.